worship. Hallelujah, God, I worship you. God, I give you glory. I give you praise. God, I give you honor. God, I magnify your holy and righteous name this morning, oh God. You are the true and the living God, and there's none like you in all the earth, my God. I honor you. I absolutely adore you. I absolutely magnify your holy and your righteous name. God, I thank you. I thank you for the momentum of your spirit upon my life today. I thank you, Father, for the supernatural divine intervention of your Holy Spirit. I, I thank you. I thank you for a now word, for a now season, to make a now adjustment relative to the things ahead. My God, I worship you. I worship you this morning just for that alone. I thank you. I bless you. I thank you for this holy communion Sunday that we can celebrate. My God, I thank you. I thank you that the altar is ready. My God, I thank you. I thank you that you're looking for virgin hearts this morning. Virgin hearts, my God. Hearts that are surrendered to you, my God. God, I thank you. I bless your name. I bless your name. I thank you. My God, I thank you for your kingdom. My God. Your kingdom agenda. My God, I thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. My God. God, I thank you. I thank you. I love you today, God. I worship you. I worship you and honor you, God. I look to you, the author and the finisher of my faith, my God. I thank you. I thank you for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, my God. God, I thank you for that. I thank you. I thank you, Father, for the urgency. I thank you for the spirit of expectation. My God, I thank you for the revelation. God, I thank you. I thank you for all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ Jesus, my Lord. God, I thank you for that, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And Satan, I bind you. <laughs> I bind every scheme, every scam, every trap that you would have set against this broadcast. I bind it in the name of Jesus, and I loose it from its assignment, my God. I bind every witch, every warlock that might be lurking around, my God, even in the, I bind it in the spirit, in the natural, I bind it, I loose it from its assignment in Jesus' matchless name. I plead the blood of Jesus, all the blood of Jesus over myself, the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, the blood of Jesus over those who are under the sound of my voice as we go to our next level in you. Our soon coming King, help me Holy Ghost. I worship you this morning. I give God the praise, I give God the glory, I give God all of the honor. I wanna tell you, God is real. God is real, help me Holy Ghost. And it's time for us to upgrade our relationship with him Help me, Holy Ghost, so we can have an upgraded walk relative to what's ahead of us. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. We don't want to lag behind in the spirit. We don't want to get caught up, my God, in our flesh to the degree that we can't see or hear God. The devil is a liar. Help me, Holy Ghost. I've been praying, help me Holy Ghost. I've been praying all week. I've been praying most of the weekend. Just, you know, help me Holy Ghost. You know, you know when, when you uh, uh, have your relationship with God and it's, it becomes very personal to you. It's, it's like a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle. You can talk to him any given point in time throughout your day, my God. There are times that you reverence him more, uh, uh, maybe in the mornings, in the afternoons, at night. There, there are times of reverence when we literally acknowledge his relationship with us and acknowledge his lordship. Well, you know what? We're gonna have to step up our game in the, in the days ahead. 
The Lord spoke to my heart. I've been binding witches and warlocks. Help me, Holy Ghost. And loosen them from their assignment over this weekend. This weekend, Halloween. My Jesus. No, I'm saying, Hallowed be thy name. As the Lord was talking to me, even on yesterday, he said, Lydia, I heard this. Hallowed in the holy. My God. Hallowed in the holy. A supernatural consecrated press. My God. And he says, you know, the church is going to have to go into a consecrated press in this season of the body of Christ. I want to tell you, if you take communion, you can, well, we're going to take communion today, but you can take communion anytime you want to, especially if you want to consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Sometimes I take it throughout the week. I want to tell you, there's a consecrated press that's going to cause us to be overcomers in this season. I do not care what is going on in this earth realm. We have got to win in the spirit through Christ, my God, so that you can have a peace as you go through your day. You can think right. You can talk right. You can act right. You can walk in your power and you can walk in your authority at the same time. I don't care what's going on around you. You can do that through Christ, my God. He says, we're in a time slot, says the Lord, where the supernatural power of who I am flowing through a consecrated soul is where my invisible authority demonstrates my sovereignty and manifests my power in all atmospheres. My God, he's talking strong. The Lord is talking strong. Holy Spirit, I hear you. I sense you. I understand it, my God. I want to read it again. We are in a time slot, says the Lord, where the supernatural power of who I am flowing through a consecrated soul is where my invisible authority demonstrates my sovereignty and manifests my power in all atmospheres. My God, in other words, where my presence increases evil must cease. My God, I'm telling the righteous in times like these, uh, my presence in you must speak louder than you. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us. I, I take it in. Just take it in. This is the revelation of the Lord, and I want to remind you, as I'm communicating with you, and the Holy Spirit is attempting to upgrade this word through his revelation to you. Sometimes you just got to receive it by faith. Don't get caught up on anything else but what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Just receive it by faith. And I tell you, later on, when you want greater understanding, he'll upgrade it for you. In other words, my presence, where my presence increase, evil must cease. I'm telling my righteous, in times like these, my presence in you must speak louder than you. My God, the supernatural power of a consecrated press is where your intentional holiness in Christ has the power to destroy the works of darkness. My God, one thing, my God, help me, Holy Ghost that I miss about my apostle, Apostle Callie May Jasper, who is with the Lord right now. One thing that I miss about her, she said, holiness or hell. My God. You know, people don't like to hear that because they like in-between stuff. But she stood on something. She said, holiness or hell. And the Lord is saying to us, the supernatural power of a consecrated press is where my intentional holiness in Christ has the power to destroy the works of darkness. Why? A supernatural consecrated press is not designed with terms to please man. It's where the righteous earn the right to press through by the sovereignty of God's hand. My God, that's part of the poetic prophetic word. And the Lord is saying to us, uh, his, this consecrated press is not designed by man. It's designed by God's sovereign hand. Oh my God, the Holy Scriptures testify in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 8 to 14, NIV. Get your Bibles. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. For once you were in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. You are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 10. And find out what pleases the Lord. Verse 11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Rather, expose them. Mm. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Verse 13. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. My God, that's the word of the Lord. That, that's, that's in the word. That's the word. That is the word. He's saying once you were in darkness. We were all been in darkness. Some of us are still in darkness. Some of us are having layers of darkness taken off of us every single day. The more we go for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the darkness that's on you has to go. Oh, I'm telling you, it's a work. It's a press. It's a consecrated press. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. He says, where my presence increase, evil must cease. My presence in you must speak louder than you. The supernatural power of a consecrated press is where my intentional holiness in Christ has the power to destroy the works of darkness. Consider this supernatural Holy Communion Sunday to be your personal altar call. Now you better stay with me and, and I hope you have your communion ready because we're going to have communion today because you got to take this one personal. The Lord is saying, consider this supernatural Holy Communion Sunday to be your personal altar call and for, and, oh my God, and for some, it will be their last Holy Communion altar call. Oh God. You better take this personal today. He says, I'm calling you away from unclean altars, those places in the spirit and in the natural that you bow down to, either because of lack of knowledge or you were in a, agreed by personal or generational seduction to engage in dark powers in exchange for money, sex, control, and false power. I better say it again because this is a Holy Communion Sunday altar call. And for some of us, it's the last call. God help me tonight. The Holy Spirit just quickened me. <laughs> I remember when I used to go to the club and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, the bartender would say, last call for alcohol. I hear the Holy Ghost saying right now, this is the last call for some of those, my God, who are about to fall. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. Consider this supernatural Holy Communion Sunday to be your personal altar call, and for some, it will be their last holy altar call. I'm calling you away from unclean altars, those places in the spirit and in the natural where you bow down to, either because of the lack of knowledge or, or, or were you agreed by personal or generational seduction, my God, to engage in dark powers, uh, my God, in exchange for money, sex, control, and false power. I'm calling you, says the Spirit of the living God, to be hollowed in the holy, to be hollowed in the holy, meaning allow me to remove from you what I can't use in you. So when you say, hallowed be thy name, you're calling me from a, that holy place in you. My God, I want to say it again. Hollowed in the holy, hollowed in the holy, my God, my God. He says, he says, I want to remove from you what I can't use in you. So when you say hollow it, 
be thy name, you're calling me from that holy place in you. It's where holy comes face to face with holy. My God, Lord, I love you today. I love the way the Lord is talking to us today because he's calling us into an alignment in him that override witches and warlocks and oh help me holy ghost come on when you walk forward in the days ahead as we are encountering the collision of powers in the earth we have to stand in the power of god himself help me holy ghost we've got to stand with an assurance with an authority knowing who we are in christ in spite of what we see and in spite of what we hear so that we know at all times my god it is well with my soul god i love you I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. He says, I'm calling you, says the Lord, my God, to live holy, meaning let me hollow in you. Let me take out of you what I can't use in you. The Holy Scriptures testify in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. My God, stay with me. Just stay with me. Hang out with me. Hang out with me in the spirit. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16, NIV. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, my God, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming, my God. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Now, we have all lived in ignorance. Some of us are still in ignorance. I don't know everything. There's some things that I'm ignorant about myself, but I am willing to live out what I say I believe. I'm willing uh, to live in the revelation of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that there can be an upgrade in me on a daily basis, moment by moment. I'm moving by the Spirit of God. It's not always comfortable to be moving by the Spirit of the Lord, but I want to tell you there are places that God wants to move us into that we'll never return back to. My God, God, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The Lord is telling us, uh, prepare for the days ahead. He wants to further open our eyes, uh, the eyes of the righteous through his revelation in order that they understand uh, the supernatural power of his sovereignty when it comes to holy living. My God, uh, God has already set in place uh, from before the foundations of the world through the power of his own sovereignty and holiness, uh, supernatural rights a passage uh, to those who live consecrated lives my God yes Holy Spirit yes Holy Spirit yes Holy Spirit my God I just heard the Holy Spirit say something to me he says you know remember the American Express commercial Lydia they tell you don't leave home without it he says, but I want you to tell the body of Christ, uh, don't leave home, my God, uh, without the Holy Spirit. Don't leave home, my God, without being able to be, to be led by his Holy Spirit. Don't leave home, uh, uh, oh my God, so without the Holy Ghost, uh, so that you're walking in that consecrated lifestyle. My God, you cannot leave home without it, not now. Not now. Don't leave home confused. Don't leave home mad. Come on. Don't leave home bitter. Help me, Holy Ghost. You better repent before you put the key in the door to lock the door. You better, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. This is the sign of the times uh, relative to what we're living in right now. And he's making every attempt to communicate to us by his spirit the alignment that's necessary in a consecrated life. God, I love you. I love you. He says, it's where the righteous earn the right, oh my God, and power through obedience to holiness to pass through demonic atmospheres and forces because of their holiness. My God, my God. 
He's telling us you got a holy right to walk in dark atmospheres and not be moved. My God, you want to check a devil? Live holy. You want to check a devil? Live holy. God, help me. Help me. Wherever there's a hard press uh, through adverse conditions in the spirit or in the natural, holy consecrated living becomes a supernatural easy pass for the righteous. Oh, my God. Stay with me. Stay with me. Holiness. Oh, God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm not going to be long, but I know the Holy Spirit is making you strong right now. He says, just as cars and trucks uh, pay tolls uh, to pass through bridges and tunnels uh, through an earthly governmental system called the easy pass system, those who live in intentional holiness and righteousness have access to the sovereignty of my governmental kingdom authority and power to access my kingdom system to pass through demonic adverse conditions in the spirit and in the natural says the spirit of the living God oh God I thank you God I thank you so it is in the spirit as it is in the natural God help us to make this connection my God as you give us an upgrade today relative to what you're attempting to say God I thank you I tell you this day says the Lord don't get it twisted check your walk the righteous will not experience hard times when, oh my God, the righteous will not experience in hard times what the wicked experience in hard times. You better say thank you, Apostle. You better say thank you, Apostle. Let me make it plain. The righteous do not have the same outcome as the wicked. And it's going to be tough in the days ahead because those who are really living for God are going to get different kinds of results, my God, uh, uh, from the wicked. And, and, and we're going to have to monitor our emotions in the days ahead because those who are my, may not be living right might be living in your house. Help me, Holy Ghost. But you're getting different results because you're living according to the word of God and they're not. I'm telling you by the spirit of the living God, don't be moved. Oh God, help me. Help me. You may live around wicked or even with the wicked, but you are walking in righteousness and holiness. Oh my God, you will not experience wicked outcomes. Mm. Check your walk. Check your walk. That's all I'm saying. Check your walk. Check your talk. And check your walk. Because you will get the result of whatever you're attempting to communicate. And if it's not by the Spirit of God, if it's not according to His Holy Word, you're going to get different kind of results. Trust me. He says, we're not moving. We're not moving in our own power. A supernatural consecrated press is where the authority of the righteous increase. It empowers the righteous to speak to evil and it must cease. I want to say that again. That's the poetic prophetic word. My God, God is talking to us. My God, in such a way, he's encouraging us in him by his spirit to let us know that through him we can do all things he's telling us come on and make the adjustment in the days ahead hallelujah that you live a consecrated life so you can walk in the power and the authority of christ himself in adverse conditions and atmospheres my god this is real church because we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. He's saying a supernatural consecrated press is where the authority of the righteous increase and empowers the righteous to speak to evil and it must cease. Mm. I got a question for you. Does evil respect your voice? 
Does evil respect your voice? Help me, Holy Ghost. He says, we're not moving in our own power. It's the supernatural power of the Lord God Almighty. And we must believe that when we speak the word of God according to his will, something happens. My God, the Holy Scriptures testify of the Lord speaking to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12, King James Version. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. My God, let me say it again, because God is moving by his spirit. He is hastening his word to perform it. He just needs you to speak it. Oh, God, help me. God told the prophet Jeremiah, Thou hast seen well. In other words, you have judged rightly. Whatever the Lord commissioned Jeremiah to say, warning Jerusalem and the captivity of the people during that time, the Lord hastened his own word to perform it out of Jeremiah's mouth. What do you think God is doing today? He's watching over his word to perform it. My God, my God, as the Lord is shortening the days, so that the very elect are not deceived, according to Mark 13 and 20 NIV. He is also hastening his word to perform it as it leaves the mouth of the righteous. I dare you to live holy and speak the word of God. I double dare you to live holy and speak the word of God and believe that God is watching over his word to perform it. I guarantee you by the spirit of living God, if you live and speak in that order, you will be an eyewitness to the manifestation of God watching over his own word to perform it. God, I thank you. And the Lord is saying, as he's watching over his own word to perform it, we better watch what we say. My God, if we don't say what we hear him say, it could go another way. Oh my God, oh my God, please church, be careful. Be careful what you say. Because if you're not saying what God is saying, it could go another way. It could go another way. The Lord just told us where his presence increased, evil must cease. He says, my presence in you must speak louder than you. My presence in you must speak louder than you. What is he saying? Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, when you're walking... In my presence and you are aware of my presence being upon your life my God my God there's a there's a supernatural allegiance huh? and a reverential fear that comes over us huh? and what leaves our mouth is already checked by the Spirit of God huh? because we're walking with his presence and when he can check us huh, before we speak then we can say what he's saying, and when we say it, get the right results. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. My God, my God, my God, my God, hallelujah. The Lord just told us, where my presence increase, evil must cease. My presence in you must speak louder than you. The Lord is saying, when we approach his throne of grace to find help in time of need, according to Hebrews 4 and 16 NIV, his voice will override our voice. And when we speak, it's like a supernatural voiceover in the spirit that evil respects. Oh God. Let me just make it plain and make it short. When we speak the word of God, the devil respects the word of God. He doesn't respect your opinion. He don't respect your tears. You can cry all night long if you want to. You can be depressed all day if you want to because that's a choice. Help me, Holy Ghost. But once you start speaking the word of God, you got backup, supernatural backup by God himself to watch over his own word to perform it. My God. And he says, uh, when his voice will override our voice and when we speak, it's like a supernatural voiceover in the spirit 
that evil respects. Oh my God, the Holy Scriptures testify in Proverbs 29 and 2. Proverbs 29 and 2, King James Version. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Oh my God, what's happening today, church? What's happening today? I want to read that scripture again. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. It's crucial that we walk in holiness and righteousness. It's where the supernatural power of God can work in us, through us, and on our behalf. This is what we need right now. This is what we need right now. Whenever the spirit of righteousness is in operation in God's holy people, supernatural right, righteous adjustments, my God, of God's supernatural peace, provision, my God, along with his mercy is displayed and manifested on behalf of the people. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, 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 I just have an example in my head, in my head. I have an example. Sometimes you can go to a grocery store, any other store, and you'll meet the nicest person behind the counter. Sweet spirit, kind, and giving you right direction with a smile on their face. You'll just feel good. It's the approach. It's a righteous approach. But he's also telling us, when the spirit of wickedness attempts to rule, witchcraft is in operation, causing division, oppression, violence, and premature death. And that's what's happening right now. Wickedness is attempting to rule. And even this week I was binding that premature spirit of death called COVID-19 over the United States of America and our households. You better keep the word of the Lord in your mouth. You better bind and loose that devil, my God. You better use your authority and power. You better walk in that righteousness, my God. It's where the supernatural power of God can work in us and through us on our behalf. And this is what we need right now. Why? Whenever the spirit of righteousness is in operation in God's holy people, supernatural righteous adjustments of God's supernatural peace, uh, provision, along with his mercy, is displayed and manifested on behalf of the people. How many people can you be nice to this week? Hmm? How many people, how many people can you impart kindness to? In the midst of chaos, even when people are nasty, you gotta find a way to be nice. Cause evil can't overpower God's goodness. It can't. But we have to begin to demonstrate this by what we say and what we do because righteousness rules. Help me, Holy Ghost. And this is what's happening right now. And God is calling us by his spirit to be hollowed in the holy, hollowed in the holy. When, when the Lord was showing me this yesterday, help me, Holy Ghost. Meaning, allow me to remove from you what I can't use in you. So when you say, hallowed be thy name, you're calling me from a place that is holy, where real change can be made in our hearts. My God. He says, as many are carving out their holiday pumpkins, the Lord says, let me carve wickedness out of your hearts, my God, says the spirit of the living God. Let him carve that wickedness out of us. Because only God can do it. Because some of us got a nice, nasty spirit. Oh, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Some of us are guilty of a nice, nasty spirit. And it's intentional. And it is wicked. 
and you need to be delivered from it. My God, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Why is he saying this? A supernatural consecrated press is intentionally purposed in the heart of a righteous soul. It's where the pain of commitment brings us forth like pure gold. It's where the righteous learn to master doing good when evil is present by keeping our hearts lifted before the Lord where there's no resentment. Mm. Mm. You can't have resentment in your heart. I, I thank God for this supernatural holy communion Sunday and this holy altar call. I thank him for that today because it's cleanup time. If you're gonna make it in the days ahead, it's cleanup time. You can't walk around all day in resentment and bitterness. You can't walk around all day being mad, help me Holy Ghost, as somebody else that ain't thinking about you, help me Holy Ghost, in troubled times. It's a time for holy, intentional, and holy, intentional, a holy, intentional press in the presence of the Lord. The more you press into my presence, says the Lord, I'm going to lift life's pressure off of you. Mm. Anybody, anytime you need to be relieved from the pressures of life, just press, press into the presence of God. That's all you got to do. My God, he says, it's only my presence upon you that can resist the presence of evil. Don't you know when you are in the presence of God and you're worshiping God? Come on, come on. That devil can't stick around. He can't stick around. He got to lay back on the sidelines. My God, until you give him another open door to come in. Oh, God, help us today. The Holy Scriptures testify in James uh, chapter 4 and verse 7, NIV. I'm almost finished. James chapter 4, verse 7, NIV. Submit yourselves uh, then to God. Submit yourselves uh, then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What is he saying? The supernatural technique of submit and resist positions you in my presence, says the Lord, to block demonic activity from flowing through your lives. Mm. Submit, resist. Submit, resist. Submit, resist. Submit, resist. If you don't submit, you can't resist. Mm. That's why you can't walk around all day looking like a peacock in the spirit, full of pride, my God, thinking you got some power. You're fooling yourself. Submit and resist. Oh, God, help me. There's a clear distinction between the righteous and the wicked. And in troubled times, don't let the devil play with your emotions. My God, there's a clear distinction between wickedness and righteousness. And in troubled times, don't let the devil play with your emotions. Uh, we must know the difference between compassion and sorrow. Stay close. The devil can't manipulate our emotions. We've got to know the difference so the devil can't manipulate our emotions. Compassion is God's love in action that offers a way out through concern, through kindness, and resources. Sorrow offers sadness, regret, grief, and you just feel helpless and hopeless. There's a difference between compassion and sorrow. You need to know the difference in the days ahead so that the devil cannot play with your emotions. My God, there are people, help me Holy Ghost, that we're going to have to help. There are people that we're helping right now and there's some people that are just scammers. Oh my God, help me Holy Ghost. The Lord is saying, don't lose hope with the hopeless. When our hope is in the Lord, don't misread the sign of the times. Don't let a heavy spirit rest on you 
if you know that you're walking upright before the Lord. Mm. I just heard the Holy Ghost. He says, don't let somebody else's guilt weigh you down. Ooh, Jesus. Don't allow somebody else's guilt to weigh you down. Oh God, I love you. I love you. I love you. He says, don't allow a heavy spirit to rest on you. Oh my God. Even if you know that you're walking up right before the Lord. Where my presence increase, evil must cease. My presence in you must speak louder than you. Oh my God. The supernatural power of a consecrated press is where our intentional holiness in Christ has the power to destroy the works of darkness. Oh God. Our intentional, our intentional holiness. What is he saying? I'm about to close and we're about to take communion. I love God. He's having straight talk with us today. And he's given us insight relative to the sign of the times, the days ahead, and how the, to make the adjustments that we need to make in him so that we can move forward and not be disturbed. My God, consider this supernatural Holy Communion Sunday to be your personal holy altar call. For some, it's going to be their last call. And God is calling us by his spirit to be hallowed in the holy. As we even begin to take communion today, he's hollowing out in us what he can't use in us. I just say, clean me up, Jesus. Just, just clean me up. Meaning, allow me to remove from you what I can't use in you. My God, my God. So when you say, hallowed be thy name, you're calling me from that holy place where a real change can be made in our hearts, my God. Hallowed in the holy, a supernatural consecrated press, my God. Father, we come before your throne of grace. Come on, bow your spirits with me. We come before your throne of grace, God. And we worship you. And we thank you for this word on today. We thank you, Father, for the way you're talking to us now, God. Based on the sign of the times. And based on the readiness that we have to be in. In order to survive the days ahead. Oh, you're talking strong to us, oh God. You're telling us, Father, my God, hallelujah, that we have righteous rights when we live holy before you, O oh God. We have righteous rights, my God, that evil must respect, uh, my God. You want us to upgrade uh, our personal walk with you, my God, so that when we speak, uh, evil respects our voice, my God. Uh, you're telling us even now that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, my God, we will condemn. My God, my God, you will condemn. My God, my God, my God, you're working with us to watch over your own word uh, to perform it in our lives, my God. And we thank you for that on today. We bring our hearts to the throne of grace. Carve out what you don't need. We intentionally surrender. I intentionally surrender. You speak for yourself. Lord, I intentionally surrender. Anything in me, God, that you can't use. I freely surrender it to you. I thank you for this holy altar call on this communion Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it. We present our hearts. You know us better than we know ourselves. There's nothing that we can ever feel that's unknown to you. You knew us while we were yet in our mother's womb. 
you know this. We come before you. I'm not trying to hide anything because we can't hide from you. But we repent. God, I repent before you. I repent before you. Come on, let's ready to receive our communion. Come on. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood. Come on, get your communion ready. Father, thank you. We bring our hearts before you, Father, because we don't want to be the same. We want a real change in our hearts. We want a real change. We want to be able, Father, to keep our hearts lifted before you so there's no resentment, no bitterness, no unforgiveness. We thank you that your body was broken for us. We remember what you've done. We remember your body was broken for us, oh God. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us partake. All the blood, the blood washes us whiter than snow. Transparency before God. It's power, power in the blood. Power in the blood. This blood was shed for us on Calvary. Thank you for the blood. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time in your presence. I decree and declare by the Spirit of the living God, Father, on this communion Sunday, I decree strength to your people, soundness of mind, stability in their emotions. I decree your supernatural peace over your people on today, oh God. I thank you for new beginnings. I thank you for a fresh start. I thank you. We embrace this word today, oh God, hollowed in the holy, a supernatural consecrated press. We embrace it today. Show us how to walk with you and talk with you this week on a whole new level as we have submitted our hearts afresh unto you. Again, I decree and declare by the Spirit of the living God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. My God, every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn it and we pull it down. This is the heritage of the children of the Most High God. We use our power and our authority today, God. I say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I thank you. I thank you that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and we're not beneath. I thank you. I thank you that our heads are lifted high above our enemies on today, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you and praise you that right now evil respects our voice. My God, I thank you. I thank you for the power of your might and the power of your strength oh, to rest on us. God, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you all of the honor. In Jesus Christ's matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.